In this house, the first year I got it, I caused 14.8 tons of CO2 to go into the atmosphere. And in 2009, I took out 6.6 .6 tons of CO2. I went from the very first year, 39,958 BTUs measured at my meters off the bill, and I dropped down, and in 2009 I was minus 1,309 BTUs measured at the meter. But there's a more relevant place to measure it than at the meter. And that's at the source because electricity measured at the meter had an awful lot of energy wasted mining the coal, transporting the coal, turning the coal into steam, steam flaring off. And so if you measure everything by source, when I got the house it used 60,500 BTUs per square foot annually. And that number I've reduced down and that number I'm at minus 22,300 BTUs per square foot annually. And I continue, my 2010 figures will be better than this and 2011 should be infinitely better because I've got a lot of things going on now. There's a total of 9920 watts of photovoltaic panels, 48 panels total. Uh, one system is 7000 watts of sun power the other system is about 3,000. I have mostly south face, but I have a little bit of the polycrystal with an east face, and you lose, oh, 10 or 12 percent of efficiency on that. Uh, the one PV system uh, is a normal grid tie, but then I added a battery backup system between that one and the grid. And here's the battery bank in the garage. The PV charges these, and this, if the grid goes down, these will be inverted back to AC for the house. But also when that's happening, these are showing the other system that the grid is up because they are, these are pseudo grid and it keeps the other system working. So I can keep these guys charging. I got 20 kilowatt hours of, bad, of electricity storage in here. If we had a big power outage and I had snow on the roof covering up all my PV for four days, I'd be able to keep the whole house running this room, it was an outside rotten 30-year-old deck. And instead of replacing the deck, I said, well, it's on the south side of the house. Why not make it a solar furnace for the house? And so the deck ran from right here, <clears throat> where the step down is, to the bedroom, and from the house out to where the support posts are. But I expanded it out uh, and I made it be a clothes dryer so I could get rid of my natural gas clothes drying. I made it be a greenhouse so you see the banana trees and the citrus trees down here. Uh, and these are all dwarfs and they will bear fruit. This is their first year. And uh, I used all coal and recycled materials except for the bamboo. The bamboo is a renewable material. So all the lumber in here was considered coal and reject. Um, and in this application, uh, the evaporative cooler, which is over in the far corner, it's got a bunch of insulation leaning up against it, but that evaporative cooler is uh, the fan that takes the heat out of this room in the winter that comes through the glass windows, south facing windows, and that pumps it through the house and it comes, it just circles around, heating the house, and I open the dining room window over here and it comes right back in. I do not heat this space, but it heats the house in the day by pumping the sun-generated air uh, warmth through the evaporative cooler and around the house. Here is the old wall, right at the window. What I've done here is built in layering the polyisocyanurate R7.2 per inch. And I've thickened this two by four wall, which had a thickness of maybe five and a quarter inches, counting the siding and the cellotex and the drywall. I've thickened it by another eight and a half inches with polyiso. And then I've put on a nice redwood finish. And so it makes uh, a nice R60 wall. When I got the house, it was an R9 wall, so this is not going to lose heat this winter 
at any kind of rate at all. And uh, uh, I'm going around the house doing this all the way around. The attic, I have blown cellulose and I'm at R100. So I'm going for R100 on my attic spaces, R60 on my walls. And that's how I will get rid of the furnace eventually. Okay. Now this room is the first room that I applied that technology to. And so I built in using uh, both on this redwood uh, as the finished coat and a channel pine. And this was the North Cold Corner room and you could freeze a glass of water on the window seat on a cold winter's night. Now it's amazing. There's no heating, no cooling ever done in this room. In the middle of winter it'll be the same temperature it is in the middle of the summer, 68 degrees. Nobody goes from a gas to an electric water heater. That is stupid, except it's not stupid anymore. But this water heater that's going to replace this water heater has a heat pump on top of a 50 gallon tank. This heat pump is amazingly efficient. It's like a ground source heat pump or sometimes mistermed geothermal for heating the house. This will heat my water with ambient heat pulled in effect out of the floor here. This is amazing. You can see if you uh, Google on the web GE hybrid water heater or GE heat pump water heater you'll get a chance to see the most beautiful fun ad you ever saw um, and uh, a lot of description of this. This is the first one sold in Colorado. This furnace is a condensing furnace. The combustion air comes in here and the exhaust goes out there and outside you see, so it doesn't go up the chimney. You notice where the chimney used to have a furnace line that's plugged. As soon as I replace this gas with this, that will all be taken off and I will no longer have a air leak to the outside called a chimney. This I hope to also get rid of. People will wonder why. It's because I won't need a furnace anymore. Because I'm using the sun and super insulation.